Hello and welcome back to another live stream. And if this, if this is, <laughs> hello, Start again. And welcome back. <laughs> Lynn, I'm really pleased we're not doing this live because I've already made one mistake. <laughs> oh, we are doing it live. We're doing it live. We're live. <laughs> if this is the first time you're watching us, um, not welcome back, just welcome and hello and thanks for joining us. My name's Craig. I am from mansioningles.com, which is a website where you can learn English for free. And also, if you are studying for the B2 First Cambridge exam, um, there's a website where I have created a course to help people prepare successfully to take the exam. That's EnglishMasterclass.net. There's a free level test that you can take on the website. And with me, um, I'd like to say hello to Lynn. <laughs> Got it right today. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> From PutItLikeThis.com. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Craig. <laughs> um, and hello, everybody. I think I can see some people are joining us already. Um, my name's Lynn, and um, my website is putitlikethis.com. I'm an online English teacher, and um, I specialize in tailor made courses for people. So I teach um, people, you have an objective in English that you want to achieve, and then I'll create a course to help you try to achieve that objective. It could be an exam, maybe you teach your subject in English and you, you want to refine your classroom language as a teacher, or maybe you're an academic and you need to give presentations or you need to write in English. Those are some examples of different objectives. And, uh, and I create courses personally, like tailor-made for those. So if you're interested, you can get in touch with me by putitlikethis.com. Put and like I'm really this. happy to see we've got lots of people joining us now. So we've got, hello, Angela, Isabel, Canyon. I don't know where you're from. Heide is there again. Hello, Heide from Buenos Aires. Carlos, um, Coque, Juanlu, Juanlu, uh -huh. Juanlu. Hi, Bryna. Uh -huh. And Monica from Cadiz. Hello. Welcome. And I also want to say hello to Hema, who will I'm guessing will be watching the replay. She hasn't been too well recently, so I want to say oh, I hope you're feeling better, Hema. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do miss you because Hema's with us most weeks. And yeah, um, Hema's yeah. our regular. Hello, Hema. Get well soon. Uh -huh. Get well soon. I hope you you're, you're better soon. A speedy recovery, as we say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so um, last time Lynn was on, which was two weeks ago, we spoke about words that we like. This week, we're going to speak about words we dislike. However, before we do that, we've had a request, haven't we, Lynn? We did. We had a request in that last episode that we made with words that we like. So two weeks ago, I think it was Carlos Alvarado. Is that yes, right? Carlos. Carlos. I don't know if he's listening. Oh, Hema's there. Hi, Hema. Oh, she's there. Hi, Hema. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Hema. Um, Hiya. Yeah, I don't know if Carlos is with us this week. If you are, Carlos, send us a message. Carlos Alvarado. And he specifically asked us last time if we could do something with the causative have. The, the the grammar point of the causative have in English. So we're going to spend... 15 minutes on the causative have for um, Carlos. And if you're not there, Carlos, I do hope you're watching the replay. <laughs> and, um, and I'm sure the rest of you might be able to benefit from this as well. So we're going to do a quick rundown of the causative have, and then we'll go into talking about the words that we dislike. Exactly. Well, you've got the grammar up there. It's using have or get, and we'll explain the difference in a minute, plus the object, plus the past participle, but we'll get to that more in a second. When do we use it? When, why would we use the causative? Well, we use it when we don't actually do something ourselves, something is done for us. For example, I'm going to ask you a question, Lynn. Do you think I cut my own hair? Now, be honest. <laughs> Do, do I That's cut a trick my own question. hair or do well, I get my hair cut by I'm, somebody else? Yes. Well, I'm going to give you the polite, um, tactful reply. And I'm going to say, I hope that you get your hair cut by a professional, Craig. 
as I do. <laughs> Although at the moment it doesn't look like it. <laughs> obviously you do because your hair always looks nice. But obviously my hair, I cut myself. And oh, I started cut cutting my own mm. hair. I need to cut it again with um one of those electric hair trimmers. And mm. I bought one at the beginning of the pandemic because mm. the hairdresser was closed and my hair was getting long. So I bought one off the internet. And um, I don't have my hair cut. cut. I cut it myself. But most yeah. people, most sensible people like Lynn, have their hair cut by a professional. And that's, yeah. let's go quickly back to the grammar, to have my hair, which is the object, done. Or sorry, cut. Or cut. Past, mm -hmm. Or done. Past participle. Mm -hmm. That's the past participle. All you, all you have to do with this is you have to take the verb that you would normally use, like cut or do <laughs> or you could say there's lots of other things you could say blow dried for example uh shampooed right uh, to shampoo so you take any verb and you make it into a past participle and but to show that you're not doing it then you have to put have before it so for example i give you lots of varieties at the hairdressers i have my hair cut i have my hair washed I have my hair conditioned because my hairdresser has a very nice conditioner. <laughs> so I have my hair conditioned. I have it washed. I have, well, I have it washed. I have it conditioned. I have it cut. I have it blow dried. Uh -huh. wow. How many Which days is, are you in there for? Oh, ages. He's Italian. He takes ages. <laughs> He likes to talk, though, <laughs> if he's watching. I don't know, Luciano, if you're watching. Sometimes he watches. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, he and, and I have my hair blow dried. And occasionally I have my hair straightened because my hair is a little bit curly. So sometimes to get it looking like this, I have to use straightness. Okay. okay All the things well. that we women do for our hair, Craig. I know, yeah, and I just go zut, 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 and it takes me mm -hmm. two seconds. Um, right. Now, moving on, let's give you some more examples. So I'm not a mechanic, and every year I take my car to the garage and I have my car serviced. To service your car is where the mechanic checks the oil and make sure everything's working, looks at the lights, the wheels, the brakes, make sure the car is safe. So every year I have my car serviced by a mechanic, so very similar to the passive, but it's not necessary very often to mention who is doing the action. Mm -hmm. I had my car serviced yesterday. Everybody knows it's a mechanic who services a car. Mm -hmm. I had my hair cut. Everybody knows it's the hairdresser who cuts your hair. So it's not necessary very often to mention the person. To say who did it. Uh -huh, that's right. And there's lots of other examples too, for example. Yeah, let's look at some of yeah. them. What about these things? Yeah, okay, right. So um, <laughs> I'll ask you then, Craig, yeah. Um, do you uh, – what have we got there? Coat, flat, Coats, washing. Because sometimes washing. my coat gets dirty. Ah, so do you get your coat cleaned or no. do you wash it yourself? I usually put it in the washing machine. I don't take it to a dry cleaners. So mm -hmm. a dry cleaner will wash some people's dresses, coats, etc. So I don't have or get my coat cleaned. One thing the main difference between get something done or have something done is formality. To get something done is usually more informal, mm -hmm. but the meaning is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Do you and clean do your you... flat? Oh, go on. You, you uh, yes, I do. I was about to ask that. I actually do clean my flat now, but in the past, I used to have my flat cleaned. Uh -huh. But um, it's it's one of the um, downsides of working from home. When I used to work in the British Council and I had to travel to my place of work every day, I had no time at home. So I used to have my flat cleaned by um, a, a lady who used to work for us. Um, but, um, but now that I work at home, sometimes I have downtime that's like little breaks between classes and mm -hmm. then I think oh I can do a little bit here and a little bit there so now I actually clean my flat alone <laughs> you could uh, my family with the broom, too. clean uh -huh. clean it while you're working at the computer with one hand <laughs> 
well not quite <laughs> but yeah but I don't get my flat cleaned anymore unfortunately because it it's not something that I like doing really one or two comments that are coming in. Uh, Wilfredo's joined us from El Salvador. Hi. And Carlos mm -hmm. is here. So, Carlos, I hope this is useful. And if you have any oh, questions, ah, great. Uh -huh. if something's not clear, please write in the comments and let us know if something still confuses you about this causative thing. Yeah. And my okay. friend Erasmo is joining us. So, hi, Erasmo. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Erasmo. Uh -huh. Hi. And Claudia is saying that she had um her car repaired because maybe she had a, a small accident or something mm -hmm. broke in the car so mm -hmm. claudia didn't repair it herself she mm -hmm. didn't want to get her hands dirty maybe she doesn't understand how the engine works she's not a professional mechanic she had the mechanic repair her car so she had mm -hmm. it done and I, one thing that I actually hate, because today we're talking about things that we hate. So one of the things that I actually hate is having my photo taken, Craig. Yeah. What about you? Do you like having your photo taken? It now, depends. notice the grammar there, everybody, because I said, do you like having, having your photo taken? But it's the same structure. Yeah, to have your photo taken mean somebody else takes your photo. Do you like having your photo taken, Craig? I hate it. It, it depends. I, I don't mind it if I'm with a group of friends and it's very informal and everybody's having mm -hmm. a great time. I have no problem. But I need to get some photos taken for the website, a bit more formal um, and for social media. And I... I don't like having my photograph taken seriously when I when mm -hmm. I when I have to. It has to look nice, mm -hmm. but normally I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Vicente is asking um, a question just to uh, off topic, uh, not exactly on topic, but um, how was Fias? Fias was was very quiet for me. It was raining here, as you know, if you're from Valencia. The weather was terrible, so I stayed at home and I worked. How was Fias mm -hmm. for you, Lynn? Um, pretty much the same. I did enjoy one day. On I, I went to see some of the Fayas uh, sculptures, which was really nice on Saturday. But the weather wasn't very good, so um, no. I did most of Fayas on the television. Actually, I watched it on the television. I watched did the you? burning of the Fayas. Oh yeah, I watch and I watched the Mascletas on the television too. It's not oh, the wow. same as being in the Mascleta, but I I observed it from afar. <laughs> Graciela's saying that she doesn't like having her photo taken either. So you've got a friend there, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I hate it. Okay. And, and Carlos uh, has said, I have my, I have corporal, my corporal done this, done this exercise. exercise. I'm not sure this... what you're saying there. Is this example right? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm this... not sure exactly what you mean there, Carlos. Try again. Maybe uh -huh. write it in Spanish because, and we'll translate it for you because I'm not sure what message you're trying to get across there. Maybe but, when you're saying mi corporal, do you mean a person? Do you mean that you had somebody else do your exercise for you? I'm wouldn't not that, sure. wouldn't that be nice if you could have someone go to the gym for you? <laughs> And do your and do your exercise routine. No, but if it is another person, if it were another person, the correct way to say that is, I had my exercise done for me. An English exercise, for example. Uh -huh, an English exercise. I think I think you're talking about like uh, English exercises. I had my English exercise done for me. You might say, I had my emails written for me. Or I had, for example, um, Obama or any big leader, often they have their speeches written for them. And that means that somebody else has written their speeches. And again, it's the causative have. They have their speeches written for them. And in our and, examples there at the bottom there, there's the word mm -hmm. website because most people are not professional website designers. So very mm -hmm. often they'll have their website designed. Uh -huh, for or them. they'll get their website designed uh -huh. um or they'll have their teeth checked or they'll have their a tooth removed by the dentist mm -hmm. and tonsils i'm not sure what tonsils are in in spanish but you can have your tonsils removed mm -hmm. in the hospital because you're not going to remove your own tonsils right the tonsils so are something in the back of your throat it often yeah. gives sore throats and sometimes they they remove them uh-huh 
Um, so what did he say? In, Carlos has written a message now about who won. So he's a, a, a physical trainer. And it's a cabal. Yeah, so it was, militar. that's what I thought. A military My exercise. Corporal, it's a military exercise. So I have, I, uh -huh, but what I had. I had. Ah, I think I, I know. I think it's a different thing. He wants to say, I had my corporal do this exercise. It's right. when you make somebody else do something for you. But that's a different structure. It's it's uh -huh. a different structure. And it's also more common in American English. An American speaker, an American English speaker might say, I had my personal assistant write the memo or write the email. Or uh -huh. I had my accountant um file my taxes mm -hmm. i don't now, think british people use it like that way so much well, but but the difference there's a difference in the grammar there right because what we've been telling you here is that we've been saying use the word have then use the object and then use the past participle but in the sentence that carlos is trying to say which is i had my corporal do the exercise the grammar's different right? The grammar's different because you've got I had, and then you haven't got an object, you've got a person. You've got, a, right? <laughs> and the, the, the subject here of the next bit is my corporal. Yes. And then you don't follow it with the past simple. The, the, you don't follow it with the past participle. Past participle. You follow it with the infinitive. Uh -huh. I had somebody do something, there's the object, the something, for me. You don't have to say for me if it's not necessary. So it is, that grammar, um, Carlos, is related, but it's a separate structure, right? So the one we're teaching, the causative have, is to have something, yeah, my hair, my car, um, uh, my tonsils, right, done with the past participle, right? So you have an, and then an object, and then you need the past participle. But the structure that you're making is to have somebody, and then you need the infinitive do something. I hope that helps. <laughs> I think someone's asking for a Spanish translation. I know we have lots of Spanish people watching, and I Mm -hmm. apologize to those non-spanish speakers like it as more but here's a uh, translation that might help our spanish um listeners and viewers i had my flat cleaned is mm -hmm. me, lim me limpiaron el piso mm -hmm. i didn't clean the flat somebody cleaned it for me mm -hmm. So it's reflexive. I think the structure is reflexive in Spanish, and in English we don't have the reflexive structure. And could yeah. you translate in Spanish, Craig? Can you translate? I had um, my corporal <laughs> do the exercise. I don't know how to translate that in Spanish, uh -huh. but it means I. What it means is that I instructed. Uh, my corporal to do the exercise. I ordered, I commanded. Uh -huh. So the Spanish I commissioned, trans if you like. <laughs> mm -hmm. In Spanish, that will be hice que mi cabo hiciera el ejercicio. Oh, I okay. had my corporal do the exercise. I had my secretary um, write the send the emails. I yeah. had my lawyer file the. Um, the papers. Mm -hmm. Shall we move to the main topic? Mm -hmm. Is, if everybody, yeah, if, you, that, if, if you, have you have more, more questions, questions, let us know. Just write them in mm -hmm. the chat, and we will get to them during this stream. But we want to move on to the main idea, which is the opposite to what we spoke about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we spoke about words that we like, and we explained why. And one reason for this is that when you are learning vocabulary and you're expanding your vocabulary, perhaps you don't need to write every new word. Perhaps you can be very particular, very choosy. You can choose the words that you learn. Maybe you like the sound of the word. Maybe you like the expression. Maybe you like the collocation. Maybe for some reason it's interesting to you. 
And that will be more effective because you're more likely to remember words that you like. But now we're going to tell you about words that we dislike. <laughs> and why That's just because we... Craig and I, you know, I, yeah, but I'm sure that you guys out there as well, there must be English words that you hate. There are Spanish words that I hate too, and German yeah. words. And there Often might be Portuguese there words that you hate. You know, exactly. Let us know. <laughs> so my first, my first word is hack. And there are two reasons I don't like hack, but let me explain the meaning. There are several meanings. One meaning is to, to cut violently. For example, if you're walking through the Amazon or a big jungle, then you will hack the trees and the leaves and the plants so that you can walk. So it's, um, it's to cut with a strong, rough stroke. It's not precise, is it? It's not to cut, which is more precise. Hack is without any kind of care, isn't it? Exactly. Care or precision. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and one reason I dislike it is I just don't like the sound of the word. It's quite a hack, it's hack. hack. <laughs> There's nothing pretty. There's nothing nice about the way the word sounds to me. Mm -hmm. And it has another meaning, which is used in computers for example um a computer hacker h-a-c-k-e-r mm -hmm. is someone who tries to break into computer systems um maybe to get secret information now i know there are good positive hackers because hacker can be a positive word you can hack computer programs to find problems and then help the developer to improve it but um, usually it has um, a very negative connotation if you're hacking a computer. And as an adjective, you can use it to describe a cough. <coughs> if you oh, constantly cough. cough, you have a hacking cough. And I don't like that use of the word either. So that's my mm. first word. Isn't there like as hack. well, isn't there an expression in English which is he's an old hack? What yeah. does that mean? He's Does an that old mean hand that he's an expert. He's yeah, an expert. He's, he's uh -huh. got a talent. Uh -huh. He's got a talent for it. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, you're an old hack at podcasting, aren't you? I'm just. I'm, <laughs> I'm an old. You know how to pod <laughs> I'm an old hack. At, I'm just old. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just old. But um, yeah. Anyway, let's move okay. on to your first uh, group of words, Lynn. <laughs> yes, I know. They're all related, aren't they? I hate the word vomit. I think it makes me feel ill when I just, the word, I, in English, we don't really use the word vomit. Vomit is very sort of medicinal, isn't it? You say that the doctor says you know, vomiting. vomiting. Uh -huh. Or if you go to the, the chemist shop to get medicine, it's like medicines for vomiting. Uh -huh. It's in the side effects of most medicines. Usually English people say, I was sick. Uh -huh. I was sick, which is very generic because when you're sick, it can just mean that you're at home in bed with a fever. <laughs> and if you say I was sick, <laughs> um, it can also mean I vomited, right? So it's it's very sort of uh, general when we say when we usually say it in English. But the this word vomit is of course very precise. Obviously, nobody likes vomit. Nobody likes vomiting, and I don't I don't like vomit. Mm. <laughs> and it's a, it's a very ugly word, I think, as well. Would you and prefer then, throw up? Because there's a phrasal verb that means the same, isn't there? Yeah, to that's right. Up. To throw up is a phrasal verb meaning the same as yeah, vomit. Eduardo, yeah, Eduardo's Eduardo just Eduardo got asked. there at the same time as me. Yes, and, and definitely. Yeah, I think I would prefer I throw I threw up. But that's also a bit graphic for me. I prefer the I was sick. <laughs> it's more delicate. <laughs> and then I hate the word. I absolutely hate the word diarrhea. And I'll tell you exactly why. And you can see it because I can the never spelling. spell the damn word. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible to spell. It's an awful spelling. And the, there are two spellings there. The first one is the British English spelling of the word. And the second one is the American spelling of the mm. word. But whichever way you look at it, it's not nice. <laughs> Diarrhea, is it? No. So if it's not coming <laughs> out one end of the body, it's coming out the other. So it's yeah. not. Nobody wants, like nobody wants diarrhea. No, no. 
And um, I don't before... need, personally, I don't need to write about them. I can avoid saying them and I never read, need to write them. So they are words that are out of my vocabulary. I don't want them. I'm just yeah, sharing I, I them agree. with you today because you asked me which ones I hate. <laughs> and I agree with you. I, I dislike those, wor those words as well. Mm -hmm. And Grace, Graciela is saying that she doesn't like the word whereas and she doesn't know why. But it's quite difficult to pronounce, especially for non-English speakers, whereas it's not mm -hmm. a word that we say rolls off the tongue whereas. if something rolls off your tongue it's quite easy to say quite mm -hmm. pleasant quite nice to say but whereas might be difficult to to pronounce mm -hmm. um and carlos let's go back to the causative for a second yeah for a yes second, that's, that's a, a good example questions. that's much that's much better carlos he has his nails done today yeah my sister has her nails done every two weeks she has mm -hmm. them painted in mm -hmm. a nail parlor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I had my wife cook my favorite meal. Carlos, when you use the word my, you did this mistake as well with the kernel. My, the, 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 uh, the pronoun is M-Y with a Y, not M-I, like in Spanish. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I had my wife cook my favorite meal. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, lucky you. And then uh, Jose Manuel Gonzalez Fernandez has a has an uh, a comment. He said for example, I had my suit washed because I now not was a lot of work, I had a lot of work, I think he want to say. Yeah, or it could be it was a or lot of work. It was a lot of it. work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so or maybe had you had uh, you had your suit washed because it was a lot of work. It was too difficult to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I, yeah, I would sense. have, mm -hmm. I would have, if I wore a suit, I would definitely have them cleaned mm -hmm. professionally, I think. Okay. And Ed, Eduardo says that he doesn't like the word pronunciation. Hmm. Now, it's very interesting because Craig and I say that word differently. I've never mentioned it to Craig, but you pronounce that word very differently from me. How do you, you say, say pronunciation? pronunciation and you say pronunciation, pronunciation. Uh -huh. yeah if you look in the dictionary you'll see that the standard received <laughs> rp pronun is pronunciation <laughs> okay yeah pronunciation. But, but it's it's no problem because you see you'll see this variety in english like craig says i say bath and craig says bath Ah, oh, there you are. So, yeah, it happens all the time between us. Yeah, but um, do you say laugh or laugh? Laugh. Laugh. Uh huh. It's a good laugh with you, Craig. Every yeah, week. we we always a have good a good laugh. laugh. We always have a good laugh. Uh -huh. Laugh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea dislikes weather. Ah, um, weather. Yeah, weather's not nice because weather is a, a homophone because homophone isn't it because there's another spelling of weather like the weather like the sun and the rain yeah i dislike which is the weather w e a t h e r and this weather means um if often mm. Mm -hmm. just use if if you don't like just weather use just if. use if in right mm -hmm. if it's easier to spell it's easier mm -hmm. to say exactly mm -hmm. Eduardo says noun, pronounce and pronunciation. Exactly. Pronounce is the and verb. You the verb, and you'll see the spelling is different. You see, yes. pronounce is N O U N C E. But in when we have the noun, that O U N disappears and it becomes un, pronunciation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. But you'll you have people uh, saying it differently. Okay. Next one for you, Craig. What's your number mm -hmm. two? Moist. <laughs> I love that word, but my family hate that word. My yes, daughters hate that word as well. Mm. Why do you hate it? Why do you hate moist? Um, well, let me explain what it means first. It's somewhere between dry and wet, somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. So if you have a cloth, for example, you're, you're going to wash the dishes and you've got a cloth you don't want it very, very wet or you're going to clean something. You want it moist. You want it to have some moisture. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't like the sound of it. It's not wet. It's not dry. What, it, it, like, what does it really mean? I just oh, don't, I I think don't like I it. I think it's lovely. It's like the idea of something, something with a little bit of like 
I, I like it because I like the word moisture, this little bit of water. So I kind of think of like the countryside in the morning, you know, when you go out on the grass and the grass is moist. It's not dry, it's not wet, but it's moist. And also moist often is used for foods, yeah? Maybe if you make biscuits and you have them in the oven too long, then they're too dry. Uh -huh. If you take them out of the oven too soon, then they're too sloppy. We would say sloppy if they're not cooked properly. But if you have a nice chocolate chip cookie and you take a bite and it's Or a moist, sponge, a sponge uh -huh. cake. <laughs> or a sponge cake, yes. A sponge cake, like a biscocho in Spanish. A sponge cake. You want the sponge cake to be moist. You don't, you don't want, want it, it be, dry. You don't want it dry yeah. and you don't want it soggy. You want it just right. So I like I, the I, word moist. I, I don't like the sound of it. I don't, yeah, anyway. No. Mm -hmm. um question from rita who asks what's the difference between weather with an h rita and if mm -hmm. well in some cases there's no difference for example i don't know whether it will rain tomorrow i don't know if it will rain tomorrow no difference whatsoever but there are some cases where there is a difference for example in a conditional sentence mm -hmm. um if I if it rains, I won't go to the beach. Whether it rains, I won't go to the beach. You can't say that. So but you can say it on... the other way. Uh, can you say I will go to the? No, you can't. That's right. Uh -huh. yep. In a conditional so it, sentence, you can't. So if has more uses, if has different uses. But in in that example I gave before, there's no difference at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so would it be right, Craig? I think it's right to say that you can avoid the use of weather. By using if. In, yes. But, but what you can't, you can't do is, the is replace the word if with weather in all situations. Mm -hmm. Yes, Eduardo. Cookies again. We both love cookies. So it's nearly tea time, Eduardo. Come on. We're getting hungry. <laughs> of course we're getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very topical word for your next <gasps> horror oligarch. I'm glad you said it because the reason I hate that word is because I can never pronounce it. I think when I first saw that that word in English, which of course it's not an English word, that's coming from Russian, I presume. Although of course Russian has different script, but but that's a it's a borrowed word from another language. And when I first saw that word, I had no idea what it meant. And this happens to me a little bit as well. Often I read words and then I kind of know what they mean, but I've never heard them spoken. And when I first started to pronounce that word, I used to say olgiak. Because I, I misread it, like I dis I was a bit dyslexic. I, I read it the wrong way around. So I used to say ugly arc or ugly arc or ugly arc <laughs> you know those ugly arcs <laughs> which is not right <laughs> sounds like a monster from a fictional it is. and people always used to laugh book. whenever I, I mentioned it in conversation if we were having a discussion i always get it wrong and in actual fact it's it's a it's not a great thing but it's only since this war in ukraine that i've actually managed to consistently pronounce that word <laughs> properly which is oligarch oligarch uh -huh. yeah but it's a strange word isn't it in english it is, a, it is a strange word and i mm. don't know is it is it specifically for people from russia or is it used for other nationalities I'm can you have sure. a no, like I'm a greek sure. oligarch i'm not sure uh -huh. i'm i'm not sure either i mean i'm not actually sure i mean it re it really means somebody who's very rich doesn't it Somebody who has a huge fortune is an oligarch, a lot of fortune, a lot of power. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah. And make mm -hmm. their money sometimes, very often through government contracts. Through government kind of contracts, possibly. Uh -huh. Jose Manuel is asking about the word focus, and it seems like a swear word, a bad word. Yeah, that's because it's mispronounced sometimes. The vowel sound with the O is O, fo, focus. And the second vowel sound that uh, the U is pronounced uh, so it's focus, focus, focus. Uh -huh. That's the correct pronunciation. And it, if it's pronounced incorrectly, it does sound like a bad word. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, I remember your long O, very long O, fo fo focus, focus, focus. Mm -hmm. my, my next word is antisocial. Now, when you see the prefix anti, it means against 
Um, so it's someone who is not um, sociable, not mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't do a sociable thing, doesn't behave in a sociable way. If you say that you are antisocial, then the implication is that you don't like being with people. You're you're not very comfortable interacting with people, and um, it's very it has a very negative connotation. And um, that's the reason I don't like it. I, I, I don't like to be thought of as antisocial. Maybe sometimes I am, but it's not uh, a word that I, I would like to be used for me. And that's why I've put it on the list. You don't like it. Uh -huh. don't like it. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. It's usually used, though. I think the word antisocial is not really used as a as a as a big criticism. I think it's usually when somebody is it a party and uh, they say, if I say, oh, where's Craig tonight? He didn't come. He's oh, so antisocial. He's so antisocial. He's being antisocial. But it's kind that's of like That's why I a, don't like it. You don't like it. Uh -huh. that, that's the reason, But it's not really though. badly, is it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But it's a criticism, it is. It's a but it's also criticism. meant that you're that you're you're obliged to be. There's uh -huh. obligation to be so that if you if you say no to something, you're thought of as being antisocial, antisocial which is a very negative is, thing. Uh -huh, and it's not true. So it's not true. It's, That's true. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, let's uh -huh. move on to yours. Okay. Awesome. Now this is a word which I used to like, but I have developed an intense hatred for. <laughs> now, the word awesome means, of course, brilliant. Now, we'll start with the, the first, this is the adjective, and the, the noun is awe, and you are in awe of something. Now, awe, you see it, um, it's, a, it's not a very common word, because awe, you see it a lot in the Bible. It's like when something amazing happens in front of your eyes and you can't believe it and you are speechless then you are in awe if you admire somebody very much because they are such a perfect brilliant person who have achieved so many things you can say i am in awe of you so for example i'm in awe of craig for his podcast because he's a podcaster <laughs> extraordinaire so i am in awe it means i admire him very much that's because now, i'm so antisocial that's all i do <laughs> now awesome is an adjective but on i'm saying unfortunately in australia and new zealand they started to use this <laughs> this awesome adjective to mean something is really good. So if you if you if I say, did you go to the cinema last night? Did you see that m new movie? In British English, we'd say, yeah, it was brilliant. And people in Australia and New Zealand, they all go, yeah, it was awesome, awesome. <laughs> and I find that that is too much. Like they are using a word in the wrong position. You know, awesome should be reserved for something that we are really in awe of, which is not a film, <laughs> right? And so, and now it's becoming, it's its sort of got very, very popular. It's in America and it's, it's coming into British culture too, that people are saying awesome all the time. And I just don't like it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's used a it's lot too much. in American English. It's overused. English. Uh -huh. It's overused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can say like this cup of tea is awesome. Well, no, it's just it's no, a it's cup not. Of, it's just it's a, a cup of tea. It's, it's very a nice. Good. It's a nice uh -huh. cup of tea. It's not awesome. Tasty. Uh -huh. And I think also because a lot of young people use the word awesome, and it impoverishes us. It impoverishes their vocabulary. So instead of saying things like the cup of tea is tasty, or that's a very hot cup of tea, it's a cold cup of tea, everything is just awesome. But it's it's kind of an, it's, their vocabulary is not very rich because they're using awesome all the time. <laughs> and because it's an extreme adjective, you uh -huh. can't say very awesome uh -huh. <laughs> because it's extreme. Exactly. Uh um, you could say absolutely awesome if you were listening carefully to our podcast two weeks ago. Oh, not our podcast, yes. our class two weeks ago. You, you can, can say um, absolutely uh, awesome. One or two comments to look at. Rita said mm -hmm. oligarch is used, especially in Russia. 
a very rich leader with a great political economic influence. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. what I understand from But especially Oliver. in Russia, but maybe not exclusively. I think perhaps you can use it for other nationalities. I think you probably can, but I think yeah. this is the origin of the word was Russian because I sometimes when you hear them speaking Russian on the and it's being translated um you hear the word so I've mm -hmm. heard Russians use that word like that I don't know how to pronounce it but they they're saying something like oligarcha or something okay. <laughs> I don't know what exactly how sorry if anybody's Russian here then maybe you can help us and tell us how to pronounce it properly because I don't know Eduardo's saying talking about tea time as we did before have you heard about the elevenses of course Eduardo. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if right. yes Elevenses are um, what I usually have around about 11 o'clock, half past 10. And my elevenses consists of a cup of tea or maybe coffee with a biscuit or a cookie. Mm -hmm. uh, just a small snack, something very light in the middle of the morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And what does Rita say? Um, oh, thank you, Rita. That's very kind. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's that's very exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> the awesome spider. Now, now Spider Man is awesome. Yes, he Spider Man awesome. can definitely be awesome. I would allow that. Awesome. I don't that's... mind that to say the awesome Spider Man, because of course he's unique. Mm -hmm. I quite like that 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 you've put up there though. It's quite nice next to my name. You've got on the screen now, Lynn. Awesome. You see, Lynn, before awesome. we had we had the awesome Spider Man, and now we've got the awesome Lynn. <laughs> it's much nicer than Lynn vomit, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My next word is on the ground. <laughs> My next word is on the ground, which obviously has a literal meaning, like the you know where's where's the piece of paper? Oh look, it's on the ground, or or what's that over there on the ground? It's on the it could be on the pavement, it could be on the floor. On the ground is um, where you where you walk. However. It's really been overused, especially in the media in recent years, and I can't quite understand what it means. You might hear, let's go over to our reporter in Ukraine and hear what's happening on the ground. On the ground. Uh -huh. Does that mean like that she can't or he can't speak about what's happening in the air? No, I just don't what that understand. Means, no, what that means is that they are physically present. Oh, okay. that they're talking about something and they are physically there. This is not a report that they've heard from somewhere else. You say, so it's live our, then. It's live. It's our well, why don't they say live on the, why ground? on the ground? It doesn't make well, sense it might not me. be live, maybe it was filmed an hour beforehand. But, but the reporter was physically in the place where the report is coming from. Hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes a bit more sense to me. Mm -hmm. um but it's not always used for reporters for example i've got a quote here from a dictionary an online dictionary mm -hmm. their political ideas have a lot of support on the ground which means with the public but why mm -hmm. don't they say with the public because on the ground doesn't mean anything to me yeah that's true mm -hmm. <laughs> so i get your point about reporters being physically uh -huh. in the place but it's used in so many different ways in the media now that don't make sense to me. So it's that's bit, why I yeah, don't like yeah. that expression. You don't like that one. High five. I hate high five. <laughs> it's so American. I have can nothing you, against America. I have very nice can you American virtually friends. High I like five America. Me? But I hate. High five. Uh, oh, no, I have to do it this way, don't I? That way. Uh -huh. High five, uh, Lynn. Oh. <laughs> it's just not British. <laughs> <laughs> And shake hands it's just two yeah yeah i'm sorry <laughs> i don't like high five so high five i'm sure that you know it it's it's when you when these when these people go high five and what they mean is isn't it great and the 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 high five is because of course you've got your five fingers and you put your arm up in the air and you hit your hand against somebody else and mm -hmm. say high five um i don't know i find it a bit patronizing do you know the word patronizing? I know you know the word patronizing. It's like like you see adults do it to children and they go, oh, high five. <laughs> and it's like they want the children to like them. <laughs> how, do, how do you feel about fist bump? I hate that as well. 
I think, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I bet you like this as well. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll put the link in the in the chat now because there's a program that you can watch on YouTube that will be very good for your English that I I enjoy. It's called Room One Hundred and One, and it mm -hmm. puts things like what we're speaking about now. And like Lynn's got a perfect example here with um, with High Five to put that kind of thing in One Hundred and One Room One Hundred and One. And last time I watched an episode, one of the things they put in Room 101 was the whooping from an audience because audience, they clap. Mm -hmm. But Amer particularly in America, and now it's moving to the UK, they go, woo, 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 woo. woo. <laughs> I bet you hate that as well. It's not my favorite. But sometimes I, I have been, sometimes I have been partial to a little woo, woo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes okay. I've done it, but um, I mean, I've done high fives as well. I mean, if somebody comes to me and says high five, then of course I'm very polite. So I high five them back, but it's not, it's not my, not, not my scene. deal, yeah. not my scene. No. <laughs> okay. And it means like you said on the ground, I mean, what does high five mean? Well, what five, high, I'm, your hands five, up, fingers, up high. five fingers are in the air. So what, what does it mean? I mean, Sometimes it means like hello. Sometimes it means goodbye. Sometimes it means well done. It, it yeah. it's just not specific enough. <laughs> yeah, I get. I take your point. Mm -hmm. um, these expressions used in a particular way annoy me. They bother me because usually they're followed by something which contradicts the actual expression. Mm -hmm. Um. People might say, to be honest, when, what does that mean? Like, usually you're not honest, but now you're being honest. Or with all due respect, I think, Craig, your Spanish is very bad. Then that's mm -hmm. not with any respect. So usually I don't want to be rude, but, and then the person is rude. So it's a kind mm -hmm. of way to preempt or prepare somebody for the opposite of what the expression means. Mm -hmm. I don't want to offend you, but I don't think you should do that. Well, now I've just offended you. Mm -hmm. So that's why in certain circumstances, I don't like those expressions that prepare the listener for something negative that you're I then think, going to say. But they're very clever, those expressions. I, I appreciate that you don't like them, but they're quite clever because what they actually do is they warn the listener that I am about, I am about to be offensive to you because I'm going to contradict what you're saying. But when you preface your contradiction with those, you already disarm the listener. The listener cannot be angry at you because you have said, to be honest, or with all due respect, or I don't want to be rude. So you're telling the person, don't be angry at me. You can't be angry. Because well, I'm I, being polite. I'm not sure no. I agree. But with all due respect, no. Lynn, I think you're wrong. <laughs> because, <laughs> because that doesn't stop the person being offended or being... No, it doesn't. It, it, but it, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's for the person who's speaking's benefit, not for the listener. Yes, but it also, it's, it, it, it stops you. If I say, with all due respect, I don't agree... You're not going to say, shut up. <laughs> yeah. You're not, you yeah. might be offended, but you are, you, you do not, you, you your right to, uh, to reply in a very offensive manner is already undermined by that because what they do is they set the tone. They, they set the tone of, an argument. Remember, in English, an argument is not a discussion is when we talk happily about things. An argument is when we're going to be confrontational. And when mm. you preface your nastiness with something like that, what you're trying to do is you're, mm. you're, you're setting the tone for the conversation, which is we are going to talk in a civilized way, even though we are arguing. I mean, I think they have a function. Those words. Okay, but, so you you wouldn't put those in room one hundred and one. You wouldn't you wouldn't no, say you dislike those, them. You think they've got a use. No, 
uh, I think they have a use because they signal to the person that I'm being respectful, so please be respectful with me. But I want everybody listening to mm -hmm. think that when you hear a native speaker or anybody say that to you, with all due respect, I don't want to offend you, but I don't want to be rude. Yeah, you, can expect, be you can something expect nasty. something nasty or negative <laughs> Absolutely. to come. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yes, Heidi yeah. tells us, thank you for checking this, Heidi, the, or maybe you knew that the origin of oligarch is Greek. I did not know that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And yes. I think uh, somebody earlier in the chat said something else. It looked about olig oligarch, yeah. And it was Rita earlier, and she said oligarch comes from Greek, and in Greek it means the rule of few, which makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yeah. Especially, so so it's like yeah, um, no. privilege, if you like, uh -huh. the, the 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 power of the privileged few. Uh huh. Okay. And Eduardo say, yeah, political correct. Yeah, it's being politically correct as mm -hmm. well, these expressions, Eduardo. Though. And Andrea, high five is dame estas cinco. Ah, I did not know that. And chocolas. Uh -huh. Chocolas. Uh -huh. chocolas. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, so it's you now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't I don't like this word either. <gasps> I don't know if our listeners have ever heard this word. Probably I, not. I, might think I don't want to say it because from... I hate it so much. Gob. 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 And gob is a very informal, vulgar, vulgar word for mouth. So sometimes people say, oh, she, uh, she's got a gob full of sweets if she's got her gob full. And it, it's a horrible word for mouth, isn't yeah, it? Gob. It, it yeah. is. And the verb is also horrible, to spit. Mm -hmm. To spit. Uh -huh. So when we, if you gob, he gobbed me. It means like he spit at me to spit you and your saliva. is. I, I'm not going to demonstrate that because I'll damage my <laughs> online don't screen. Don't spit on the camera. <laughs> no, don't spit on That'd the camera. Disgusting. But <laughs> to spit is when you, you have the liquid in your mouth and you expulse it. That's to spit. And to gob is another it's verb fine. for that. But it's a, it's a very... I don't know, it's a vulgar word. Uh -huh. And in the Northeast, we actually use it as a noun. Well, well, it is used as a noun, of course, because they say, oh, she's got a gob on her. Mm -hmm. yeah. she, he's got a gob on him. She's got yeah. a gob on her. And what they mean by that is that she is she always talks a lot, but badly, with bad language. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And 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 she criticizes or he criticizes other people. That's a, a gob. Uh -huh. That's not nice. Well, I think we'll have to move quite quickly because we've only got about eight minutes left. Okay. But right, um, earlier on in in the stream, Lynn mentioned vomiting, and she used this word "sick," which ah, is a and you don't like that one. Horrible, horrible word. Uh, I don't like it either. To be sick is obviously very negative. If you're uh -huh. ill, you're sick. And um, it's also a synonym of vomit. But I don't like it because it's becoming used in a reverse um, connotation. So it, it has a positive oh, meaning now, these it? days. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you can say, for example, um, I've got a new job. And I'm going to make sick money in my new job. So there it's used as an adjective, which means very, very good, impressive, fantastic, fabulous mm -hmm. money. Or I've just bought this, this new apartment and it's really sick. I've just bought this new house. It's really sick, which is a positive use of what I always thought was a negative, negative word. Negative word. No, you're so, right. It's very confusing. No? It's so poor, very confusing. Poor but, learners of English because <laughs> they can mean good and bad. Uh -huh. But sometimes when words change their meanings like that, and that happens in every language with time, a word might take on a different meaning, a different use, especially coming up from the streets. And then it becomes in popular usage. It brings for me, it brings the old meaning with it very often. So you kind of have to learn to use it if you want to learn to use it as a positive word where it used to be a negative word. And um I'm having problems using sick. I'm, I'm I'm having problems saying, "Oh, it's really nice to talk to you, Lynn. It's really nice. It's really sick to be on the show with you." <laughs> I just it's that's because you're too old, Craig. <laughs> yeah, maybe. 
because <laughs> it is a modern word there's a lot of young people now use that word sick to mean fantastic but your next word i really like so i'm surprised <gasps> it's in your list i like this word oh god i hate this word belly 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 is a ooh, no gives me gives me the heebie-jeebies <laughs> the word belly <laughs> um belly is another word for stomach stomach or i like the word tummy for for your you can for your stomach down here i can't i can't show you my stomach uh -huh, there you are <laughs> i'm happy the headline was over there when i stood up i'm happy the headline was over that made me have a flat stomach <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't see it. So um, a stomach, of course, is your organ. Another word for it is tummy, T-U-M-M-Y. I like that one. And another word is belly. But for me, again, like belly is like gob. I find it very vulgar, belly. And some people talk about, I don't, but they say a belly button. And I, yes. I would say a tummy button. That's the little, the little sort of... You uh, say tummy you say? button. I say tummy button because I hate. Your I just it's hate your navel, isn't it? Your navel is the correct word for it. It's where the umbilical cord is cut when you were born. So, we, of course, we all have one. And um, and some people say belly button. Uh, Spanish people have problems saying it actually because I think it's lots of bees and the and they they get the n wrong belly. at the end. Belly button with an n, not not bottom. Uh -uh. Button. So belly button. And I don't like it. I also don't like that part of my body. I can't touch it. I, I It gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't like it. <laughs> the heebie-jeebies are like the shivers when something shivers. repulses uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. Don't like Maria, it. Maria Angeles is saying it's common in ch in child literature, belly. Yeah. Belly ache sometimes belly they ache. say for a tummy ache uh -huh, or a stomach, a stomach ache. Stomach mm -hmm. ache. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, back on the biscuits again, Eduardo. My tummy hurts when I have too many biscuits. Mine too, and that often mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, my next one is on my radar. Now, radar, you probably know, same word in, in many languages. It's when you detect something. Um, for example, a ship might have a radar, an airplane might have a radar to navigate and find your way. But using it in the sense of you're aware of something or you know something is happening for example you know people who haven't come to watch this live stream on wednesday at eight o'clock well they probably haven't come because it's not on their radar which means they don't know about it but for some reason this expression really annoys me it's mm -hmm. being overused a lot and it's being used in a lot for people if somebody sends an email and say, oh, you've only just recently come on my radar. What does that mean? Which is like, come to my attention. Uh -huh. Come to my attention. We'll say uh -huh. that. I mean, but mm -hmm. on my radar, it's just, I don't know. There's something about it. It's pretentious, that is isn't it? Disagreeable. Uh -huh. Yes. I think it's, it's a bit pretentious because it's the idea that you're the center of the universe and you have yes. a radar. That's and, it. And, and are people coming on it or not? <laughs> and it's a, bit, it's a bit pretentious, I think so. Uh -huh. Eduardo doesn't like the word rural. That is a difficult word to uh say yes rural rural, rural. the rural. second vowel sound is uh rural. the same as the second vowel sound in focus uh, uh -huh. and ru rural it is difficult because of the the r sounds in there uh -huh. do you pronounce it the same way as i do lynn rural rural, rural. uh-huh rural. Rural. Yeah. you can maybe practice it eduardo you have to split it up so practice saying ro and that's the same sound as like in red it's a different vowel sound but the r sound is the same like the word red ro okay mm -hmm. so the vowel is different right but the the r at the beginning so if you say ro 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 and then try to say ru 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 like like in the in the name andrew yeah, you know the word Andrew, <laughs> Roo. Practice saying them separately and say roll, 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 roo, 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 
rural 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 that ha that helps sometimes when we pronounce if you go backwards with the word so start with the last syllable keep practicing it and then put the first syllable on it that often helps with pronunciation okay or you could say in the countryside <laughs> exactly <laughs> we have a question from jose manuel <laughs> When I carry on a survey, I would say carry out a survey. To carry mm -hmm. out a survey is to do a survey. Mm -hmm. When I carry out a survey in a marine ecosystem, should I say I collected a sample at the station one or in the station one? I would say from, mm -hmm. wouldn't Me you? Too. Yes, from I would. Station uh, from, one. Because you your sample has from come from the origin. The station. Uh -huh. Yeah. I collected a session, right? I think, Craig, that's time. So I Yes, think... unfortunately, we haven't mm -hmm. been through all of the list, but we hope that's given you an idea of what we don't <laughs> of like. Of what we hate. <laughs> and if you haven't seen the first part of this, the words we do like, you'll be able to find that on Lynn's, uh, is it website or YouTube channel? Where do you keep YouTube the, channel, the on my YouTube channel. If you go, YouTube but you channel. can, you can get a link to it if you want to, it's easier to find because I'm not very popular on my YouTube channel. I haven't got many followers, but you can go to my website at putitlikethis.com. And if you go to the latest news page, then you'll always find a link to my YouTube channel. And that's where I put up all of our uh, extra episodes. <laughs> and what what other reasons might people have to visit put it like this dot com apart from ah, your YouTube? Well, links? there's many reasons. It's a nice website, <laughs> which I did not have made for me. I made it myself, didn't I, Craig? I know you did. <laughs> I, and that's for the causative. I didn't have it done for me. I made it myself. So no, put it like this is my website, and basically I'm an online teacher, and so my business is to do tailor made English classes for people online. So I work usually all the time online now. Um, and so if any of you are interested in classes with me, then you can go to my website. I've got different pages and it tells you a little bit about the type of things I do. So you can check it out uh -huh. there. We did have a request because we hope that um, you found useful our explanation of uh, the causative. But we did have somebody asking for vocabulary that I'm mm -hmm. looking for now. I don't know if I'll be able to find it quickly, but somebody did request uh focusing on a particular vocabulary well i'll area. have a look for that craig we'll while you're telling later. them oh, about okay. uh you tell them about you your website <laughs> so <laughs> if it's your first time watching my name's craig and i'm from mansioningles.com where you can study english for free we have lots of free courses we have uh, two newsletters that go out every month that will help you with different levels of english and exercises and if you're studying in particular for the Cambridge B2 first exam and you're interested in preparing yourself to take that exam, I suggest first, before you pay Cambridge, go and take a free level test on, Inglés, on EnglishMasterclass.net um, and that will let you know if you've got the level to start preparing to take the um, exam. And if you score 60% or more in that test, get in touch with me on the website because uh, I might be able to help you with a course that you can start to prepare for the exam. Okay, right. And I found it. I think this comment came from Erica Leal. And she said she would like to know how is the technolo technology in your country right now? What is your opinion about the telework? So I think maybe working from home. So I don't know if that's a request to have a class maybe on the topic of working from home, places where we work. But that's a good suggestion. If that that's what you suggestion. mean, Erica, yeah, then yeah. then we'll take it in. We'll take it on board, and then we can maybe do a class in the future about teleworking because mm -hmm, it's something we're all used to doing now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. With all due respect, this was another awesome <laughs> live. Thank you, Eduardo. High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> have, um, have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Lynn will be back in two weeks with yes. a different topic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be back next week with, with Monica for another live stream. Thanks for watching. Right. See you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>